and send me the SSDs. You see how that works? It's good stuff, man. Sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, I feel like I'm the only person here not sponsored by HyperX personally. You heard right, him. Let's check out the game. Now, I wonder what it's actually going to take Masan to win here. That's a pretty good opening hand for Masan. Yeah. I mean, Decent it seems like Raynad, these mirror yeah. entities. Yeah, these mirror entities have been pretty good. The thing about Raynad is that he's not on the coin, and his curve is would have been a lot more efficient if he was able to use it. Mm -hmm. I think the most amazing part of this tournament is that it's... I mean, Raynad put up the... Uh, the prize money. So it's how much money will Raynad win back? This is the quest. Or I guess how much will he lose is the, is the actual question, right? <laughs> uh, I guess. Yeah, but it doesn't sound as epic though. No, it's definitely not. And I mean, it's not really about the prize pool as much as it's the fact that this is the first arena draft tournament format and mm -hmm. maybe not the last one from even Tempo Storm. So make sure to send your feedback, guys, of how the tournament's progressing. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's been pretty fun for me personally. I've enjoyed it. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, when you um, when you cast constructed matches, you kind of know what's going to go down, how plays are going to be made, what you can expect, and I think the surprise factor is a lot less, uh, especially considering that some of those tournaments last way longer than you know than sure. these. Sure, absolutely. You see a deck played by another player, and you kind of know his thirty cards. Now it's it's best of one, so you only have a couple turns to kind of adjust to your opponent and you have to be on your toes at all times considering what your opponent's capable of. And with that, let's, let's talk a little bit about the state of the board. So both these guys have dropped their, uh, their two-cost minions. And once again, Raynad offering, um, opting to go for the 2-3 before the 3-2, but that was because of the Amani Berserker, correct? I don't remember what he... Um, yeah, you're right, but I don't remember what he took the Kirin Tor Mage over, but I remember it being a bit of a bit of a debate between us, mm -hmm. and as it turns out, he's used that character um, mage like every single game with a secret. Yeah, it was, I think it was an Imp Master, oh, and that's right. uh, we were saying how yeah, Imp Kier Master Kier is good value. Ooh. Speaking of good value, Mirror Entity copies the Dark Iron Dwarf. Yep. That's nice. So that's going to force uh, Masan to tr uh, it's about to trade. as good as any other creature, but yeah. yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it, that way, like, you, you can keep your minion alive, you can continue to trade. I don't like the 2 4 as much as pushing out the Tiger because your deck is not supported by spells. You need to control the board more than you need to draw, especially when you have mm -hmm. just as many cards as your opponent. Yeah, your minions are your spells, essentially. They're yeah. your ways to do damage to minions and control and continue to push out. And now Masan, at best, is really going to be trading this minion. Well, he got he got in a, in a good spot where Reyna didn't actually have a good uh, turn five play. So it didn't. yeah, Reyna has oh, too many. Spots. But if he had the silver hand one turn earlier, it would have been a bit different. For sure. Now uh, Masan does end up uh, drawing. <clears throat> Uh, straight into that engine, so it gives him a pretty clear-cut play. And now he has the option to kind of uh, push for damage and just start to really put pressure on. And it would still be a little annoying. I think he's also thinking about trading, just because the Silverhand Knight can also get through and then he can kill off the Doggy, for example, pretty easily. I think killing the 2 2 is the correct play here. I think he doesn't want to get Flame Strike either. He's like, he's not sure if he has it. Flame Strike clears you regardless. Doesn't matter what you do, you get cleared by Flame Strike. And you trade for the board, so it's fine. Mm. It's just if he doesn't have Flame Strike, you'd be in the best spot killing the 2 2 there. I think uh, that emote confirms that it's played on a timer patch, by the way. So, mm -hmm. you guys know. The thing is, with this play, if Reyna had Fireball and Polymorph, actually, no, just Fireball, um, he could punish us really hard. And yes. as it turns out, uh, Fireball is the card that he has. Yeah, exactly. And now he can uh, pretty much just clear the board. But 
he also has the option to kind of stall and put out minions as well with like the injured blade master. I kind of yeah, like the fireball. Old injured blade. Well, I guess because uh, fireball is a little more versatile, uh-huh. and like injured blade master, like yeah, I, I guess that that's what it makes sense. So fireball is a little more flexible in what it could be used as. And Code of Cold is still kind of clunky. Like, you don't necessarily always get the chance to get good value out of it. I so I think, I'm, I think I'm okay with this Code of Cold play. I'm okay too, I just don't like it as much. Well, one thing that's nice for your conscience as a player is that it uses all your mana compared to the previous play. Now, what do you do here if you're Masan? Well, he probably doesn't have a flame strike, strike, but... I still think Fireball is better, and I think Masan, if he's like in the zone, he might actually mistakenly assume that he does not have a Fireball. Right, because he would have just... It, it felt like it would have been a more practical play. Yeah. Well, uh, Reynad's going to test immediately and sees a defender of Argus that's naked. I mean, it's either that or Sorcerer's Apprentice, which would have been much more disastrous. And now here he can trade and effectively address the board. Pretty nice. And hopefully Masan doesn't answer with his own cone of cold. Okay. I think uh, both creatures killed a raging warden, but yeah. if he does have something to to like say if he had a cone of cold, then he, that could have ended. Or a flame strike. Yeah. Right. That could have ended disastrously as well. But as it stands, uh, Masan ends up getting a two for one with the the warden. He still has his coin, which is now starting to become more and more useless. And he's held that since having, having the opportunity since turn three to use it for something. Raynard has high quality cards in his hand, but like, what can you really do with them right now? Your opponent has a lot of life to go through. And funny enough, I have to say that Masan right now is in the lead. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, this is kind of what his deck is contingent upon, right? Getting that board and having the minions continue to pressure. Like, Raynad has spells that are great. He needs to top deck, like, the Flame Strike as soon as he yep. can. If he gets Flame Strike, he'll win, but he needs to do right it now. in the next two turns. Well, that's good. Oh, that's, two that's one value. good. That is. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Raynad can fight back with uh, these kind of value minions as well. Masan uh, still really has made, you know, he can make the clear assumption his opponent doesn't have Flame Strike, but he's now starting to try to push out damage as soon as possible because his opponent's been holding three cards for a while, so you kind of have to assume that some of them are removals in a way. Unless they're really situational, like if Mage is holding two cards or something for the entire game, don't you feel like it's safe to assume it's removal stuff? Yeah. I mean, it would have been a Flame Fireball. Yeah, I think that's fair. It could have been like a, um, like a flame strike that he wanted to be more greedy with because of that much life, you can be greedy. Right. But it's still pretty unlikely. I think your uh, assessment of the situation is very good. It has to be direct damage. Mm -hmm. Renat picks up uh, the mind control tech. He's going to use his polymorph here immediately and trade and clear the board. Play his mind control tech as well. So now he's finally stabilized, and we'll see how Masan responds, because he doesn't have spells to immediately deal with this. He's got the same number of cards. Uh, Reyna has board control, but a 3-3 three, three with board control on turn 10 is, is not that big of a deal. So right now they're both at the mercy of the top of the deck. I can't really say the game is in anyone's favor right now. That's pretty cool, the way that this tournament's progressing. It comes down to two mages top decking each other in true arena style. And Masan's going to keep that Reckless Rocketeer in his back pocket for a rainy day, I guess. 
You know, at this point, the the coin is playing mind games against Raynad too. If Raynad hasn't been paying attention, um, sometimes he looks to the right or something. He might forget that Masan hasn't used a coin, and that coin could bluff, like what he possibly yeah. has. Yeah. Frostbolt's a good draw. Just kill that thing. Mm -hmm. It's better than losing your creature. Yeah, essentially just pushing damage and passing it back to your opponent. But we know that Frostbolt's better saved for the 5-2. And yeah. Reyna does actually save it. Wow! Wow, what a call. It's a really intelligent uh, y play, but at the same time it's like kind of hard to make that judgment call. Like, I definitely would have done the Frostbolt there, under the assumption. Now, for right now, it does end up having the application for Frostbolt. Masan is, once again, in a happy mood, because he thinks he has Raynad potentially cornered here, because he didn't, couldn't really efficiently remove that 2-3. Maybe he doesn't have efficient removal for the 5-2. Really intelligent plays from, from Raynad here. As well as uh, Masan trying to make assumptions based off this play, but it's going straight into Raynad's plans. Well, the Frostbolt is good, but the rest of his hand is not. Like, play a creature, hope for the best, I guess. Hoping for the best is pretty much all you can do, right? <laughs> and hoping oh. for Frostbolt. Wow. All right. So Masan going to save that as well. Potentially buy him some time against a really big creature. Yep. Right at top. Yes. Nice. Really, really good draw. Mm -hmm. Yep. Now Masan will have to use the Frostbolt, and he is again at the mercy of his next card. It's coming down to the wire between these two guys. Masan, he's the kind of. Had a serious demeanor fall over. Oh, coin! Whoa! Coin. Perfect card! <laughs> nice. Uh, he doesn't choose to uh, coin out the Frostbolt. Uh, yeah, I, I guess. Why would you save the, the coin too much other than maybe the mind games once again? Yeah. Hassan runs a very mid game centric deck, two to four mana cost creatures. But the Pyro Blast comes out and Hassan. He doesn't have a big minion anymore. Fifteen to twenty-one life. Well, the situation so far has been over. The situation has been reversed to where um, Masan is even with cards and he has board control, but he also has a crafty creature on the board. Oh wow! Renad once again saving his spellbreaker because he wants to see what his opponent can do. And the Spiteful Smith's enough to kind of like bash and control the board. So right now, um, Masan is, uh, has the life lead. He's got about an even board, but he's behind a card because the board trades uh, two for one right now. Oh, he's behind two cards now. Whoa! Wow. Keeps going. Two big pickups from Raynan. Yep, huge draws. Wow, that is massive. Oh, he chooses not to play the Yeti. Yeah, he's playing around a flame strike. Yeah. So he knows a flame strike will have to be played here. And he chooses and does chooses not to, and so Raynat's actually surprised because he's assumed because he knows Masan's been holding to this one card for so long. Wow, holy fist. Another big pickup. It's a good thing uh, Masan did not waste the polymorph from the last turn because he really needs it now. Mm-hmm. Do you feel safe enough to to play the Yeti here? Because now is basically if he tops deck Flame Strike, and he doesn't. He doesn't have it. Well, well, yeah, but Reyna doesn't know that. And in Arena, how can you make that assumption? Oh my goodness, we've seen a, a practical application of the coin. You might be able to use the coin to bring out the Colite Oracle, but at the same time, you'd be burning through your deck, and he gets more answers as well. Yeah. I think Storm if you're Masan, you have, have to know you're, you're, ha you're playing a pretty bad mage deck, so giving them even more draws is a bad play. You're absolutely right on that. 
And the quality of cards in Reyna's hand, just, I really feel like he's in a dominant position here now because all of these mid range creatures. How is Masan going to deal with this? I'm not sure. But I am glad that um, even though I believe Reyna has this game in the bag, um, both players played uh, very, very well in this last match. And, yeah, a lot uh, of good decisions. But it's probably going to be mage versus mage anyway, so who knows. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, pretty much it, what everyone was expecting. Raynet has 5-7 damage in his on the board. I think Raynet's is now figuring out, oh that's right, he had the coin as his last card. Uh, but Raynet is now in firm position. He could be trading, he could be doing damage, he even has a Stormpike Commando to do favorable t trades as well. Hey, give me a minute. I mean, you can clear the board pretty much here. Hmm? Proceed to do so. Uh, okay. Your magic shall yep. Not I mean, Rain is take deciding to go for damage, though. I don't like this play too much. What? He Which? What about it that you don't like? Um, he suicided his 2-1 against the 3-2. He could suicide it against the 4-4 and start Pike Commando it down. Right, and, and save then the 2 5 H and kill mm -hmm. the 3-2 for... and then stay alive as well. Ooh. But and then just, now, yeah. if his opponent draws Flame Strike, and then, I don't know, maybe like Ragnaros? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. But it, it doesn't have, really matter. It could have been really bad. It could have, but he was monstrously ahead, and he's going to continue to be here for... Well, he also doesn't have lethal. Yeah. It's because he's been playing so safe that he's been giving Masan extra turns, actually, to... Well, it's safer to clear the board. It was safer and more aggressive to clear the board last turn. Oops. Reynad, uh making... I guess he slipped up there, but... Now it's kind of down to the final last. Final last. Oh, he doesn't have it in the deck. Damn it. Yeah. Uh. And now that's it. So Masan has run out of answers. He's trying. Oh, no. And defeat has finally settled in. Raynat is your Lord of the Arena champion. And oh. gets, uh, I believe, his first significant tournament win in Hearthstone. And that is, that is a high value tournament, man. Yeah. Congratulations to him. Yeah, and so. he's going to take home $2,000. Masan will go home with 1000 And all of a sudden, I think uh, all the people who are kind of hating on Reyna saying he doesn't have results, well, at least he won this one. And he can put that proudly under his achievements.